Hey everybody, welcome to our Kickstarter campaign for the Orlog Dice Game. My name is Daniel Richard, and I am the marketing director here at Pure Arts and we are on location in beautiful downtown Montreal at our Pure Arts headquarters and we are really, really excited to present this project to you. Now, in case you've actually never heard of Pure Arts, we have been around since 2008, so over 11 years, uh, designing and manufacturing some of the most popular gaming collectibles out there, working with huge names in the gaming industry, such as Capcom, Ubisoft, Bandai Namco, Riot Games, and other industry leaders. And for this amazing new Kickstarter campaign, we are collaborating with Ubisoft and the Assassin's Creed Valhalla branding team to provide a new worldwide release, our first ever worldwide collaboration with Ubisoft of the Orlog Dice Game. Now, Pure Arts actually has a head office in China where we do all of our manufacturing, as well as a head office here in Montreal. And I would love to invite you to come inside and check it out. I'm gonna give you a tour and I'm gonna show you what makes Pure Arts tick. Welcome to Pure Arts Montreal, guys. Come on in. Inside the studio, we feature all kinds of prototypes and pieces that we've manufactured over the years, including pieces with our longest standing partner, our biggest collaborator, which is Ubisoft. And you can see here we've got our Assassin's Creed Valhalla Eivor statue that we just recently released, as well as all kinds of other collectibles and even props like this guy. Very cool stuff. All right, so follow me and I will show you the rest of the collectibles. So here we've got our huge wall of collectibles and the first thing I want to show you guys are our Master Nine Eyes series that were done in collaboration with famous artist Daytoner. This is actually our first Kickstarter campaign that we ever did which was a huge success and it actually turned into this giant project working and collaborating with other artists. So we have a whole series of Master Nine Eyes now that we're slowly releasing to the market. It's an incredible project. Because we actually do our own manufacturing we have direct control on the quality of our pieces, the scheduling and the entire manufacturing process and we also have warehouses located all over the world. We've got one in China, one in Europe, one in the UK, and one in Canada for all of North and South America. So we have amazing control over our own logistics. And over here, we've got all kinds of other collectibles, statues, and PVC figures that we've manufactured for other clients. And here we have our Animus line. So this is the Assassin's Creed series that we did in collaboration again with Ubisoft. And these are all of our premium statues in one quarter scale. And what makes them amazing is they've got these LED integrations in them. So all the statues light up. So you've got Bayek there, we've got Altair over here. And we've got Ezio, which is one of our more recent releases right here. All right, so guys, with that said, let's go down to my office. I wanna show you guys something. We're gonna go have us a drink and we're gonna go talk about Orlog. Welcome to Orlog, everybody. Frey and I are gonna show you guys how this is played and uh, this is an actual prototype of the game that we're gonna be offering through the Kickstarter campaign, all right? So this is what you'll be pledging for. And we're gonna run through all the pieces and show you guys how this works. And of course, this is the game that's played in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, all the Norsemen and the Anglo-Saxons play this in every city within the game. And uh, we're gonna run through it in person. As I previously mentioned, this is our first ever global, worldwide launch of a game with Ubisoft. So we're looking at producing this in unprecedented numbers. And we need your help, we need your pledges to be able to get this out there and distribute it to as many gamers as possible. So for those of you that haven't played Orlog before, it's actually a two player game and it's relatively quick to play, making it a perfect quick game, but you can also organize tournament ladders. So one of our stretch goals will actually include a bracket ladder tournament card. We'll talk about that more later on. So let's go through the different pieces that are involved in the game. So I guess the very first thing, the most important thing is the game coin. So this you flip heads or tails to see who starts first. Next up, you've got the dice bowls that look like this, as well as each player gets six Orlog dice that go right in there. Next up, we get the health counters. So there's actually 15 per player played on the table, but you actually get a total of 32, so you get a couple of extra ones. Next up, you have the gold tokens. These are the God Favor tokens, and you get a total of 50 of those. And last but not least, you get the God Favor cards, and there are 20 per player, total of 40. And each one has the face card, and when you turn it around, you get the name of the card, as well as what it does and how many tokens are required to play it. Let's go over the available campaign pledges, and I'll explain each one. 
So the very first pledge level is the 48 hour early bird. So if you pledge to purchase the Orlog dice game, as well as all the included pieces that we've already shown you, you will get $5 off the game. And that's good for the first 48 hours. After 48 hours, it goes full price. So early bird pledge, you get the dice game as well as all the unlock stretch goals. After that, you get the standard Orlog dice game. That is the standard pledge at regular price. You get all of the pieces that are included here. So you get the 40 God Favor cards, you get the 50 God Favor gold tokens, you get the health counters, you get the coin, you get the dice and the bowl. So all of that is included, as well as all the unlock stretch goals. And finally, for the ultimate Viking Orlog experience, we have the Tavern Edition Orlog set. This pledge gets you the entire game. You also get the linen Orlog game mat, as well as the official Assassin's Creed Valhalla horn replica, which is a resin horn replica that we've produced, and it comes with the wooden base that holds it in place. And basically, you can use this to shatter the eardrums of your fallen foes. <laughs> By the way, while we're talking about the horn, this is exclusive to the Kickstarter campaign only. So you can either get this in the Tavern Edition or it can be purchased as an add-on. But after that, it will no longer be available. So you'll only get this through the Kickstarter campaign. And of course, you also get all of the included stretch goals that are unlocked by the end of the campaign. Now that you've seen all of the officially licensed Orlog gear and you're ready for the ultimate Orlog battles, let's talk about the stretch goals. So the very first stretch goal we have is to hit the $100,000 pledge mark. And when we do, we're actually gonna remove these cardboard health counters and replace them with real polished stone counters. The next stretch goal is $200,000 in pledges. And once we hit that, we're actually gonna replace this cardboard game coin with a real metal one. Next up is the $250,000 stretch goal. And for that, we're actually gonna replace the plastic baggie that holds the stones with a real linen one with the Assassin's Creed Valhalla logo on it. Once we hit the $300,000 stretch goal, we are going to upgrade your standard dice to glow in the dark or log dice. And finally, the $400,000 stretch goal, which upgrades the kit to include the champion coin and the bracket ladder cards. So these bracket ladder cards are used to create a bracket with your friends and have a tournament. And the winner of the tournament is awarded the champion coin. And then every time you get together with your friends and have a new tournament, the winner takes home the champion coin. Now, depending on the performance of our campaign, if we continue to just explode in pledges, we'll continue to add more and more unlocks. So keep an eye out on the campaign and keep checking it daily, share it with your friends, and the more unlocks we get, the more pledges we get, the more stretch goals we'll add. Now let's say you've got your Orlog pledge in, but you want to absolutely deck out your gaming table in more Viking gear. Well, that's where the add-ons come in. So the add-ons that are included with this campaign are the linen gaming mat. You can add on additional horns for your friends. And we'll also be offering special dice sets that are exclusive to this campaign. So go and check out the add-ons. They're absolutely gorgeous and they are exclusive to this campaign and will not be sold at any other time. Next up, let's talk about the setup of the game, okay? So we've pretty much got this set up exactly like you would see in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. So you've got your 15 health counters in three rows of five. We've got our dice and our bowl, and we pick from all of those God Favor cards, you pick three of them that you want. So look through all the different power and requirements that they have and decide which pieces you think will give you the best strategy. So both players do the same thing, and that's how we set this up. You start off with no tokens, okay? So the tokens are all put aside, they're awarded later. All right, before we get started, we're gonna go over some of the key game pieces here. So let's explain how the God Favor cards work and we'll go over the dice as well. So each God Favor card has a glyph on the front and on the back you've got the name, what it does, as well as how many tokens you need to execute the God Favor card. 
Each God Favor card actually has three different levels, so each level is gradually more intense and requires more of the gold tokens. These are the gold God Favor tokens, and you need to earn these in order to execute the God Favor cards. So we earn these by certain rolls and by using the dice. So we'll go through that now. Let me show you the dice. So the six dice have five different symbols per dice, and some are obviously repeated, and also some have a gold border. So two sides of each dice have this gold border. And these gold borders are what allows you to earn the tokens during gameplay. So let's go over what each of the symbols mean. So the first one is an arrow, which is an attack. You have an ax, that's an attack. We've got a hand, which is steal a token. We've got a helmet, which is defense against an ax attack and you have a shield, which is defense against an arrow attack. So let me show you how the dice actually counteract each other. So here we've got an axe attack. So if Frey goes first and she attacks me with an axe, I can defend with the helmet. So these two dice actually cancel each other out. Next up, she has an arrow attack, which I can defend with a shield. So again, these two cancel each other out. Now, if I don't have a defense against this, then that counts as a hit and I remove a health counter. And again, now I'm attacking with an arrow and she's defended with a shield. I'm attacking with an ax, she's defended with her helmet. And now we have the hand symbol like this, which means that we can each steal from each other. So when I play it, I steal a token from her and when she plays it, she steals a token from me. So in this case, it just cancels each other out and that's the end of the round. And we do that with all six dice. Um, one of the things that has been amazing is the demand for a physical version of this game. It's actually been amazing. And one of the things we were wondering here was, did the folks at Ubisoft, the folks at Assassin's Creed Valhalla, even think that there would be such a giant demand for this game? Now, luckily, we were actually able to speak to Benoit Richet, the game director of Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and ask him for ourselves, along with some other key questions we had about Orlog. So check this out. Through our historical research, we found Old Norse dice artifacts with different shapes, different materials made out of woods, uh, bones with different symbols on them, and we thought, wow, actually, Vikings were playing dice. And it was a perfect opportunity for us to uh, have this world activities and represent what it could have been from the Norse uh, to play dice inside that time period. Well, first I would say that being a designer and a board game enthusiast, I want to have a game where there's a mix of simple rules, simple game flow, enough horizontal element to be able to build basic and different strategies, yet it could get like really deep in terms of building strategies. Um, so you can imagine kind of a game like Yadzi, uh, that you battle with an opponent with dice spaces that can unleash god powers. I have to say that the ambition right from the start was to have a mini game that would fit in a physical version, that it doesn't have to live just because it's inside a video game, that it makes sense like out there, like uh, a game that is easy to get, uh, you quickly see the different way you could play, the different strategies, uh, the different way you can approach this game, uh, that the fact that there's really fast reversal, um, how it's easily expandable also with God Favor, and it's just more fun to play against a real opponent. My recommendation would be to try to first see the build that you want to have, like the type of deck, like composed of different god favors, depending the way you want to play, the way you want to approach this game. Uh, are you more like the, the aggressive type of player, more defensive with healings, like, uh, and more defenses, uh, or if you want to be a trickster, uh, there's a control type of deck, or just maybe an all-around, so you could be able to easily adapt and, and react to your opponent. Uh, something else I would mention too is that at the start of the game, notice your opponent got favored because it could avoid to have very unpleasant surprises during a game. Well, that's about it, everyone. Thank you so much for watching our campaign video. And we are really, really excited about delivering this game to you guys just in time for the holidays, before the holiday season in 2021. And now, if you don't mind, I am going to go and try and redeem myself with Frey and play another round. So thank you so much. And of course, if you guys have any questions or comments, leave them in the campaign and we will get back to you as soon as we can. And thank you so much.